Greetings, and welcome to Retro TV Radio. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. Naomi Grossman is the epitome of entertainment versatility. This Emmy-nominated actress has worked with some of the biggest names in the business as a memorable cast member of American Horror Story. In fact, many of the millions of fans of the anthology series feel, as do I, that her starring seasons, Asylum and Freak Show, stand out as the show's best. And most fans agree Naomi's performance as Pepper was a big reason why. But, as most know, this show very much lives up to its title, so it may surprise you that deep dramatic roles such as this are not really her, if I may say, standout specialty. Nope, it's comedy. In my humble opinion, Naomi not only writes but performs some of the best I've seen. Being a former Groundlings comedic troupe alumnus comes as no surprise when viewing her comedic shorts on her YouTube channel, or better yet, in her critically acclaimed, often sold-out, one-woman shows. Simply put, she is hilarious, effervescent, and entertains her butt off. It's also no surprise that her current show, entitled American Horror Story, has garnered critical acclaim and rave reviews as she continues the run of performances across the nation and around the world. She's so full of energy that you almost get a contact high listening to her. So please use caution when operating any heavy machinery. Enjoy! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the woman who put the hot in hot yoga, the incredible Naomi Grossman. Hi, Naomi. Hi there. (laughs) I almost said- I've heard it all, but I hadn't heard that. (laughs) Ooh, good. I'm starting off strong. Well, I (laughs) I thought about the woman who put- the pepper in the yoga room. No. Then her. That doesn't. Yeah. That doesn't Although mean. Pepper did do some yoga, you know. There was <laughs> some, there was some uh, you know, hashtag set life uh, shenanigans, as you can imagine. Well, I, I, I'll i say this. You know, I'm, I'm sure most of the people who know you would recognize you from that role in American Horror Story. Uh, Emmy. Nominated role, by the way, folks. Um, to me, I really loved that show. And those two seasons, you know, Asylum and Freak Show, were the ones that really resonated with me and my wife. We just loved them. And I'm starting to think, maybe it was because of you. Ah, that's so nice. You know. Well, Pepper is the glue, you know, between the seasons. So she's that one common denominator. So you're right. If you're trying to figure out what would it be um, on a, a, in a scientific way, I suppose, uh, you know, yeah, all roads lead to Pepper, maybe. I don't know. Well, um, you know, all the other actors are such slouches. I just thought, you know, you got a bunch of C-listers there. It's like. <laughs> Right. Yeah. They they really have just such dearth of talent on that show. You know, no one's ever won anything. No one's ever been in anything. I'll tell you, when they when I first got cast and I re- I found out that they were killing off. Uh, 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 what's his name? Maroon 5. Um, Adam Levine. Adam Levine. In the first five minutes, I was like, what the hell is happening? Like, how am I still here? And they've literally murdered the most handsome man, uh, not to mention talented, in the first, you know, five seconds. Like, what, what, what? It was like the universe had just gone completely out of its mind. Well, if it was my daughter, she just said, if they got rid of Evan, I would never watch this again. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. She's... Your daughter is very representative of the American Horror Story uh, fan base, yes. Well, again, it's like there's you and there's him and there's Sarah that really weren't that well known prior to this and have just, you know, you know the term, breakout stars. You're a breakout star. Well, thank you. The thing was, I only knew you as Pepper. And Ah. Oh, man. And now you know me as the... 
the star of hot yoga. <laughs> I, 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 suddenly, Pat's tongue-tied. You know, I have had quite a few celebrities on this show. And I can say, in all honesty, and now they're really going, okay, Pat, you're kind of pouring it on a little thick here. Well, I don't give a damn. You are definitely, in my humble opinion, the most talented entertainer I have ever had on this show. Wow. And I mean it. Well, now I want to Google and go back and see who else you've had. Because I'm, I'm starting to worry. No, I'm kidding. Thank you. That's very, very kind. Um, and you haven't even seen my, uh, my solo shows. I know our mutual friend... Uh, who introduced us uh, has just come off of seeing my show. She she was there um, and, and saw me in action live right before I hit off Broadway. And I, I know she she liked what she saw, but you haven't even seen it. So I, I don't know where this is coming from. No, I'm kidding. Well, I, I don't even know who you're talking about. I got this gig through your agent. So uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Here we go. We got to give this shout out to April Umek, our mutual friend. Yes. And folks, this this show is sponsored by Pacific Coast Aesthetics. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize it's so awesome. No, not really. But <laughs> I wanted to give her the plug because we love her so much and she is the best when it comes to skincare yeah. specialists, guys. If you're in the Seascape, Aptos, Central Coast area, you got to look up Pacific Coast Aesthetics because they Even are. Even if you're not, I go up there once a year myself. I mean, I'm down in Southern California. I got to get up, get on a plane to see her, but it's worth it. Yeah, I got. It's not an ugly place to visit either. So I mean, well, that's true too. <laughs> and she is a beautiful human. I mean, she and Dave. I mean, that they, they are just quality. Yeah. So. She, of course, told me about your solo show, American American Horror in Texas. No, American. <laughs> I was like, why did I get that? I mixed up Whorehouse in Texas. Wait a minute. No. Ah, uh, yeah. No. And it is American Horror Story. The play on words is pretty obvious, obviously there, folks. But uh, I have not seen any of that because it's it's still a performance that you're doing. You're still. Yes, it's a live show. It's not anywhere you can stream or readily see unless you happen to be in boston next month or happen to have been in new york last month or happen to have been in new mexico the month before that so uh yes or happen to be in the bay area like please 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 i know i know you're not the only one i've definitely got you know a few of you asking so um yeah you know i encourage people to go to the website american horror com. that's w-h-o-r-e and there is a place uh, where you can actually click and and say you want you know the show to come to a theater near you, and so uh, you know click away. Okay, well I think I'll be shouting that out from the mountaintops because look, I've seen what you have on your YouTube channel from one of your previous solo performances, and it's just I mean, here I go, I'm pouring it on again, thick. Sorry, no problem. But the fact that you do perform this stuff, let alone write it, is well, suddenly I'm starstruck. Humor. And, and that was the thing. It was like I knew you as as Pepper. And, you know, more shocking than just how, how scary Pepper looks on this show was mm. how you look in real life, which is stunningly beautiful. You know, again, <laughs> they're like, Pat, lay off, man. You're, you're going on too. But this is all true. Oh, thank you. It's crazy. I'm still, I still... You know, I'm getting mileage out of that clickbait. The, uh, you know, Pepper is unrecognizable in real life. Like this secret real life hottie, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, really? We're still <laughs> clicking on this? I mean, I'm. it never gets old to me, but I can only imagine the people in my life when I repost who are like, oh, God, gross. Well, you know, and then, and see her in Burka Girls Gone Wild. Oh, my <laughs> God. Full frontal. Oh, no. <laughs> I, oh, my God. I I feel like I did like a week's worth of sit-ups after watching I don't even say, these. you took a very deep dive, sir. Well, I couldn't stop. That was the problem. It's like, 
But again, I like to laugh. And who doesn't? And who doesn't need it? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I just wasn't being cast in a traditional way uh, for a very long time. And so um, I needed to cast myself. And so, you know, that's where the one woman shows were born out of. I went to the Growlings and spent years there, which is, of course, if people aren't familiar, a uh, oh, man. theater here in L.A., known for, you know, kind of as the SNL factory. I mean, everybody came out of there. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time there. And then when I left, I figured, well, it's not like that's the end of my I mean, that's the end of my time at the Groundlings. That's the end of my time, you know, performing live on Melrose. But the good news is there's a, uh, you know, there's a thing called YouTube out there and I can perform for a lot bigger audience there. So that's what I did. I just got my funny friends together and we cobbled together a camera and and uh, put it on stage. But, you know, a much a much bigger stage called YouTube. Yes. And yet. Amongst professionals and, I mean, educated folks uh, regarding the entertainment industry, the Groundlings is a very prominent badge. And so is that, I mean, would you consider that or do you consider that a springboard for you or? Is... Um, not directly, no, but um, it definitely reignited my passion for acting and writing and performing and being on stage um you know let's face it there's a if <laughs> if i knew back in theater school that so much of my job was going to be you know looking at pictures of myself and posting them and you know beating my own drum i think i'd i'd do something else <laughs> um and so, you know, the fact is, the Groundlings was a place where I was able to really actually act, actually perform, actually, you know, do something other than look at pictures of myself and post them. Like, I was really creative, and I was really inspired. I was this sort of, like, it was this funny think tank, basically. And um, I feel like it kept me in the game in a way that had I it had I not had it, I probably would have gotten real burnt out a lot sooner. Um, even then, though, I, I, I noticed when I looked at your stuff, you're you are the writer. I mean, did you collaborate in writing ever on any of these things or was it all? Uh, yeah, some of them. Definitely. There's you know, there's uh, some of them are solo. Some of them I, um, you know, generally the actor with whom I'm performing, I wrote it with. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. My solo shows are all me. Uh, and honestly, that's, that's what I prefer. Um, I mean, I am kind of a lone wolf. I'm an only child. I live alone. I'm single. I, I, I do. I mean, the irony is I'm a extreme extrovert. Uh, so I definitely get my, my energy from others, but I do really value my solo time. Um, and that's probably why I've really kind of thrived as a solo artiste. So, you know, I, I feel like the Growlings was a place where I was able to learn that genre. You know what I mean? Like, I know I can tell a story be beginning, middle, end in the course of three minutes, five minutes, you know. And yes, play well with others in the sandbox. But um, I'm if I get my druthers, and I do, uh, then I'll write alone in a much longer form. You know, in 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 this, the case of this, this most recent show, it's an eighty minute show. So, I mean, that's what I prefer. I'd rather not be limited to five minutes, but I can, and I've been there, done that. Yeah, was... and I think that's part of you know my education there is sort of figuring out what you're good at. You know, I don't know. I feel like. We, you know, they say that doing the same thing over and over again, expecting new results is madness. And well, I mean, I was on the verge of madness for a lot of the, a lot of my time, like, because let's face it, I I came out the womb with jazz hands. Like I, I really it never even occurred to me to be anything other than an actor. I think for a minute I thought about maybe being an astronaut, you know, but that was. <laughs> You know, that's before I knew that there was math involved. I mean, I was, you know, I really just thought it was zooming around space. So, you know, the, I, but I, I really, I had my heart set on being an actor and I, I never, ever, 
ever wavered. And in a way that was crazy making because let's face it, I, I really, I didn't find success until much later. But fortunately for places like the Groundlings, I was able to sort of, you know, new choice it, find a new way, you know, road to hoe, new way to go. And to at least while I kept, I still kept my eyes on the prize, I found a new way to go about it to keep myself from going completely insane. Yes. Now, isn't that just art? I mean, and, <laughs> and you know, it's summed it all up, but you're also, and I can say this because I've, I've seen them and I know them and I would like to think of myself as, as one, but you're a natural. Uh, you know, to me, it's like, okay, she, she does these, she writes them. Okay. Maybe she sings and dances too. <laughs> I mean, no one's paying money to see me sing or dance, but yes, if uh, in the right role, I can definitely sell a song. Um, you know, I don't know. I saw uh, The Wiz last night at the Pantages Theater and, uh, you know, The Wicked Witch was made for me because, you know, does I mean, don't get me wrong, this woman was phenomenal. But, uh, you know, those roles where you get to kind of scream sing or or just be like out, out like outrageous sort of uh, presence uh, while other people dance around you. That Those are the roles that I'm, I nail. Yeah. And not only that, folks, she can perform a routine while standing on her head. And that's no joke. Uh, well, that part's <laughs> true. Yes, I, I, I am a yogi. The hot yoga is not just comedy. I I actually have uh, yoga chops. That's true. There is nothing funny about hot yoga. Well, I take that back after seeing your short, but um, <laughs> I was uh, deep into it every day for 10 years. And oh, really? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I went so far as doing the, you know, the 60 day challenges and the 30s, 60s. Uh, just it was life-changing for me great i love that i i mean listen i could talk forever about yoga i think i am i feel like if there ever were a uh, a second career if i were to do anything but act maybe it would it wouldn't be like be a yoga teacher it would just be like kind of like a yoga i don't know proselytizer like i <laughs> a guru i truly feel like it's almost my calling to like spread the good word of yoga like i it i mean it changed my life and i can only imagine i'm not the only one like no well yeah it, i mean i called it the fountain of youth because it, oh yeah it, it just <laughs> they say if if you don't work out you, you grow tired if you don't stretch you grow old and i thought that's pretty deep um Totally. And and the camaraderie. The other thing that I loved about it was the camaraderie because you're in a situation where everybody's suffering. <laughs> and it just creates this wonderful bond, uh, you know, among your other practitioners. Yeah, you're referring to, to hot yoga because I do agree that is absolute suffering. Yes. Um, which I'll be honest, I'm not about that. So what brand do you practice? I practice uh, Ashtanga, mm -hmm. uh, as well as, uh, you know, vinyasa flow kind of oh, yeah. power. Uh, um, but it's all sort of based in the Ashtanga series. Dharma yoga, also Dharma Mitra out of New York. He's a, also, um, I don't mean also, I'm not a living legend, but he is. <laughs> um, you've probably seen his picture. He's notorious for, you know, doing no armed headstands on manholes in, you know, Brooklyn uh, with cars missing by. I mean, he's just an absolute, he's made, and he's 84 years old. I, I failed to mention that part. Um, Age doesn't mean anything when it comes to no, those practitioners. Exactly. And that's what you're, you're absolutely right. It is a fountain of youth. You look at him and you're like, well, gee whiz. I wish I could do that now, much less, you know, 84 years old. Yeah, and it should be done forever. I mean, the thing is, yeah. <laughs> you know, go to India. They're doing it until forever. It's part of the lifestyle. And so, right. you know, when we got into it, and it was Bikram yoga at that time. And, yes. And um, it's funny, when you started, when you did your, <laughs> put the hot and hot yoga, I went, oh, it's the story of Bikram. 
Oh, actually, you know what? You're, that's funny you should say that because you're right. I honestly, uh, that hadn't come out when I when I did that. And uh, and, and here, I, I'm a prophet too, you didn't know. <laughs> a seer. Gosh. You're a seer. <laughs> I thought you did such a great introduction, but you forgot the fact that I'm actually like, you know, prophesizing the future. No, you know what's interesting? The um, one of the producers uh, of that documentary that sort of outed him. The uh, it was called Bikram uh, uh, Yogi Guru Predator. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was actually produced by uh, one of my co-producers on American Horror Story, my new one woman show. Wow. Yeah, if you watch the credits, you'll see Sarah Anthony. She uh, she produced that. She's uh, she's actually got a, a new doc that's about to hit theaters uh, called Kiss the Future. She produced with um, a certain couple you may have heard of called uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Mm, you know, friends of nobody. Rings a bell. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm in good company. Yeah, and an interesting man, to say the least. I read his book, and if, it's, if any of it's true, yeah, it's pretty amazing. But, you know, when you're locking locking people into big rooms for teacher training with chains, <laughs> oh, God. you don't get out and say, I say you get out. And by the way, give us a kiss. You know, it's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I, I definitely, I love all little you know, all trees in the forest. And so I'm not going to speak ill of hot yoga. I mean, I will speak ill of, um, you know, Bikram and what it did. Uh, But, um, you know, I see value to it, but it's definitely not for me. I feel like when, when I've done it, I'm usually like, yeah, that's exactly it. I feel like, okay, I did the most unpleasant thing i could possibly do all day it's all going to be downhill from here like no matter what challenges face me i'm ready i'm up for it like nothing will be as bad as that room um but quite honestly i don't know i don't like i said i don't want to speak ill of it but i do think it's a bit of a crutch like i think like if you can make yourself sweat not because the room is hot but because the challenge the 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 postures are difficult now that's that's the next level yeah and i just feel like a lot of the um you know a lot of the poses that i'm working on you can't even do in a hot room because you'll slip and kill yourself right you know some of the arm balances and and um and uh inversions they're just they're not you're not supposed to do them in Bikram. And I mean, they're literally not part of the Bikram sequence. And, but when I have done them in a hot room, I swear I throw up after Yeah, not to take you there, but yeah, it's, it's just, you're not, your body's not supposed to do that. So no, I would almost throw up just trying to get out of the room and uh, hopscotching wherever there wasn't somebody else's sweat. <laughs> oh yeah. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's worth it. It's worth it. And look at how much weight I've lost. You know, there's that too. Right, right, right. <laughs> but um, yes, it was It was just, again, the irony is like, when you sh- when I saw that, I doubled over. I, God, I had to have my wife see it and she is laughing her butt off. And yeah, so there's your talent. I mean, just not to mention, what is it? Touch my junk? Yeah. Oh my God! The Star Trek background fight scene music. That, of course, I'm I'm the retro TV trivia guy, geek, and uh, in that short when you when you put in yeah, the, the touch my junk. I want to say or touch my junk. Isn't that what I said? No, I think that's what it was. You know, it's been such a long time since I did any of that. I, I'll be honest. All anybody ever wants to know is, you know, pepper. What is yeah? What does uh, Evan Peters smell like? And, <laughs> You know, how is it breathing Jessica Lange's air? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what, how long did the makeup take? So I'm sort of used to just answering the same questions. Nobody ever asks about touch my junk. Um, so I'm I, I'm a little out of practice. It's been, I don't know, what, at least 10 years since I uh, even thought about that stuff. Well, you'll, folks, you'll find this on um, Naomi's YouTube channel, which you'll, you'll find a link for in the description, by the way. And you will be entertained, no yeah. doubt. But, um, yes, I mean, there's that elephant in the room. I mean, my God, woman, you have your own Funko Pop. <sighs> <laughs> well, that's when you've arrived, when you have a little piece of plastic from China. It's 
hey, man, a lot of people are like, so she's got a doll. So what? No, no, no. You don't understand. <laughs> that means you're an icon. Uh. They don't make them for just anybody and they don't make them to order. You earn it. That's Thank you. Yeah. No, it's very cool. It's it's uh, what the coolest part is like I really didn't see this coming. Like it it all just sort of happened all at once. Like I I got cast in this role. I figured it was just a, you know, glorified extra role. And then um and then all of a sudden I realized, no, no, I am the ugliest person on TV. Like this is this is the biggest whack job in in the asylum. And um I, you know, I <laughs> I wasn't just an army of pinheads. It was um, it was it was the pinhead, and it was um, and it I, and even then, I mean, it wasn't until later, late into the season that I and I don't even think the the producers knew. I think I think there was always potential for this to be kind of a a really special breakout role, but you know, the audience decides these things. It was it was the audience that. Because let's face it, when you first saw Asylum in that, you know, episode one or whatever, there was a lot of weirdos in that day room. And, you know, there were there were folks with Tourette's and crazies with, you know, you name it, you know, slang and poop. And it was, you know, it was pepper that hit. And that's but that's, again, something the audience decides. Like they were the ones that started tweeting at the show like broke the internet over it like so i i really i have them to thank i have you know the producers to thank because let's face it they're watching they're listening it's not just american idol that chooses you know the winner it's it's you know there there's somebody at fx employed to watch and see you know what are folks what are fans responding to and so I'm, i'm i'm thankful for the whole machine that's incredible because I was I was really going to ask you was it pre-planned that you were going to morph into such an interesting character because obviously you know she was a she was a gal of few words um right. and then the next thing you know <laughs> it's like holy crap what a character and I was I was thinking in my head maybe they just came to realize that Naomi can act her ass off and maybe we should uh give her some more prominent lines, but you're saying that the public realized that. So again, you can, you, you can thank the public, but. Listen, I don't really know, but I think it was both. I think, I think they knew the character arc that I think they knew that Pepper would be back for more. Uh, meaning they probably, I think it was the public that got me back for season four. You know, I think that's when they were like, okay folks like this freak let's do (laughs) let's make more of them let's have some more freaks like what if we had a freak show you know so i mean listen this is just my theory like i could be completely wrong ryan murphy could be listening to this right now going like this dumb (laughs) shit but um i don't think so it's funny just yesterday uh april actually texted me last night she was at trivia and she needed to know the name of uh, the producer of Amer- American Horror Story. Not to out her as having cheated uh, at trivia or anything, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Go to the source. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And, I mean, she wasn't Googling, you know, she was just calling a friend. Uh, no, but I think I think they did know um, when they were, you know, they, they had the Bible for the show before they started, you know, before they wrote it. Uh, and I think there was always the idea that Pepper would be ad- abducted and come back. Um, I don't think I'm spoiling anything. The show's what it's twelve years old now. If you're still haven't seen it, it's your bad. But um, yeah, so I I do think that they knew, but uh, that is the producers knew, but they didn't tell me. I mean, it was it was all news to me, which is crazy unto itself. <laughs> yeah, good news. Um, yeah, very. You know, I'd heard I heard someone say one of the people that I've interviewed actually said, you know what the hardest thing about acting is? Getting the job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then second hardest thing is finding a parking place. But that was besides the point. It was was like, yeah, you know, so much competition. And I look at your work and I look at the stuff that you did on your own. I look at the one woman show. And for me, Holy smokes, what a demo package you have, uh, Naomi. I mean, if I was a casting director, it'd be like, okay, who do we got next? Naomi Grossman, hired. Next, you know. 
<laughs> I'm pretty nice. I mean, you know, like I said, had I not been proactive, though, I wouldn't have the demo. You know, for the longest time, my demo was only productions I'd produce myself. You know what I mean? It was all hot yoga and touch with junk. I mean, I needed to give Ryan Murphy something to Google. Let's face it, because otherwise it's like, what has this chick been in? Like, you know, again, it was all headshots. <laughs> like, but I needed something to show for myself. And, um, Thank, thank goodness for YouTube, you know what I mean? Or else, I don't uh, know. Well, it's true. Yeah. But there's a, there's a hip, I mean, some would say there's a heck of a gap between comedy and, I mean, I will say horror, but it's really just deep drama. And, I mean, is that gap an easy bridge for you? I mean, it's like, I'll do, come what may, you know, I can do it all. I mean, I guess that there are people that are just inherently funny, uh, and I like to think I'm one of them. Um, but the pathos part, the, the dramatic part is kind of my favorite. Like, it's funny. I always really fancy myself a comedian. In fact, I mean, you can see that in my earlier work. Like I said, all those silly shorts. I was just trying to get on SNL. That's, that was the dream. Right. And... The fact that a completely different acronym came around and <laughs> figured it out before them is, is kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, I, I was busted actually on a, in an earlier interview. A friend from my acting class back in college overheard me in, a, in an interview saying that I'd never done drama before American Horror Story. But he's right. I, I have. I mean, I went to theater school at Northwestern and we did, you know, Ibsen and Chekhov and Beckett and you name it, like yeah. a ton of drama. But um, so I'm, you know, classically trained. And yet when I came out to L.A., I really I figured, OK, this business is so hard. Let me find my niche. Let me like just find the one thing I'm good at and just like just do that. So, you know, I'm not trying to be good at everything. You know what I mean? Like the content is cubism and just do that and not try to like be Rembrandt and Van Gogh and, you know, all the artists all at once. So, so that was my thing. I was like, I'm going to just, you know, I'm not going to try any soaps. I don't need to do high drama. I, I'm, I'm just going to be the sketch specifically to comedian. And, um, and that's really what I did for a really long time. And, you know, the funny thing is when you think about it, like Pepper totally belongs on the, on the growling stage. You know what I mean? Like, she could absolutely be in the car with Chances the Cat or, you know, <laughs> living next door to the Coneheads completely, you know? <laughs> um, so on one hand, like, she belongs in that zany, over-the-top sketch world. And yet, she's living in a very different world, a, a much more toned-down, dramatic, uh, real life uh and so it was up to me to sort of take this zany character and really calibrate her and you know sometimes i can turn her up and you know me hope and you know whatever uh the name game was an opportunity for me to really kind of let my free flag fly but then there's times like the you know the orphans episode or, or some of the other more you know where there was real pathos there that that was up to me to sort of sense the room, <laughs> you know, kind of look deep into my scene partner's eyes and realize, okay, this is the time to like, you know, take it down a notch. And, and, and honestly, those, that's my favorite. So yeah, it's my, my favorite parts of like, say my solo show, which is, if I may, well, I'll just quote a, a reviewer, side splitting. Um, while it's, you know, very funny at the same time, it's the, it's the drama beats, the moments when I'm, you know, I say something like so over the top, like painful that you're like, Oh, Oh God, I've been laughing this whole time. And now do I laugh? Do I cry? Like, Oh, uh, I don't, I, I don't even know how to react. Like those are my, that's, those are my favorite moments when I kind of, confuse the audience and <laughs> and leave them like i'm so confused like i've been laughing for the last 45 minutes and now i'm suddenly crying and i'm not sure what to do well uh, yeah and i mean i think about you were saying being proactive and that makes all the difference a laser beam focus that makes all the difference and then you here you end up in deep drama <laughs> yeah with some of the best actors ever yeah yeah and I mean, were there pinch me moments where you were just like, 
Okay, this is Jessica Lang. Okay, that's Kathy Vates over there. Okay, okay, all is well. I'm behind this makeup. Nobody knows it's me. I mean, was there anything where you were uh, just... Yeah, no, I was absolutely... Every moment with Jessica Lang was like that. Mm. There was never a moment that I was like, unclench my ass. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> but enough about hot yoga. No, I mean. I was going to say, every moment that you see Pepper with Sister Jude, you can just imagine my sphincter just working it. <laughs> <laughs> and why don't we have food in our cells, Pepper? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, rats! <laughs> I'm like, there's a reason I sounded like that, right? <laughs> it's Jessica Lang, rats! Oh yeah. man! <laughs> oh, I, I tell you, I did some work on television about 20 years ago, and you know, it was scary for me. It was all okay. I'll go ahead and say it, and. My followers have heard me say this many times. It's the scariest damn thing I ever did, seeing that camera light go on. But I I got so nervous, and you'll, you'll probably get a kick out of this, and I'm sure it's never happened to you, but <laughs> when I had a line, my face would shake. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was like, quick, April, the Botox. I mean, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. I've never had that sensation. Of being so nervous that my <laughs> oh yeah yeah and and again this is just the soap opera so yeah. uh, it would have been all over for me on a prime time show with oh uh, movie stars in the cast I would have been a wreck. Well, you know, it's I mean, I still suffer from you know nerves. Um, you know, I really, especially with folks like that, I, you know, that I'm sharing the, the, the stage with, the screen with, you just have to figure, you know, their agent called them with a call time and, you know, a uh, <laughs> deal memo, just like mine did. Like, I am meant to be here in the same way Angela Bassett is, the same way, you know, like, I have a role to fill and, you know, mine is a little smaller and a little weirder than anybody else's, but it's still, it's still a role. It's, I still, am, I, I, they're counting on me here. And so I think that that's the thing that kind of grounds me to realize, no, actually we're kind of the same, you know? Yeah. We're all just cogs in a wheel at the end of the day, you know, we're here to fulfill the, to tell the story and well, and that's, it. and that's my experience from from doing these celebrity interviews is uh, basically every single person, present company included, has been the most down to earth, gracious, appreciative. I mean, just go down the list of positive qualities. You know, sometimes I would be like, oh, God, what if I'm going to this is going to be a difficult person or what if, what if, what if that 10 minutes before this, you know, the interview. Oh, God, I love that 10 minutes, Naomi, dear God. It goes by so slow. <laughs> and then, well, I'm not a big proponent of the what if game anyway. It's, uh, you know, honestly, there's absolutely no, it, we, you can't win at it. Like, I, I, I really try not to play that. And um, I just, if I can only concentrate on what's real and what's true in my life, like, I find I'm much, I much I avoid a lot of suffering that way. Right, and I guess it would depend on the environment on set too. Where I, you know, I know that some directors are probably stick to the script, whereas you know someone that does sketch comedy is like, uh, pardon me, while I ad lib and make it better. Well, I mean, and again, you gotta have to know, like, stay in your lane, like, yes, you know, and Jessica Lange. Lady Gaga, Sarah Paul, that you know, and like these people are probably afforded more liberty in that in that regard. Um, I mean, I was doing a fair amount of improvising just by virtue of being on that set because let's face it, my character was. I mean, they said pinhead, but like I had to bring her to life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, when you first read the script and it says Pepper, like you don't. No one knows what that is until I made her into something. So um, you made it a physical role. 
Yes, absolutely. But I mean, that's also, I got to hand it to the casting people because I mean, I mean, <laughs> this is going to sound gross. I don't mean to be like, they're geniuses for casting me, but they are geniuses for looking outside the box and thinking, hmm, okay, we're going to cover this person's face with prosthetics, which means we probably don't want to waste our money on like a big name. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to put, I don't know, uh, big name off with her hair. Yeah. Whoever like the, the, the it girl and you're going to cover a face with prosthetic. Like what's the point? You know what I mean? So we might as well find an unknown, but not just any unknown. Let's find like an improviser. Let's find someone who does characters who's uh, versed in sketch comedy. And, and for that matter, uh, does theater who is, used to acting to the back row because let's face it she's gonna have to act in the back row in order to penetrate that makeup i mean that's one of the things where so many actresses nowadays are blowing their faces up with botox you know and i'm i'm i've done it too uh it's either that or you know bangs but um the fact is if i had like a face full of botox i couldn't have done what i needed to do you know what i mean like i needed to be able to move my face otherwise literally all you're looking at is like rubber on a on a face if it doesn't move like it, it might as well just be a mask you know yeah yeah and again that's why i think or i said physical comedy but you were right down to the facial expressions and um even with the prosthetics you really pulled it off and went the extra mile and let them shave your head so i, I there's kudos to that too i must say yeah i mean i wasn't necessarily anxious to have that happen <laughs> You know, I wasn't sure how that was going to affect my love life. Um, it grows back thicker. Yeah, that's what they'll probably tell you. It grows back it, thicker. Um, my love life did come back thicker, that's for sure. But, um, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it was a risk, you know. But at the same time, it's not like I had this Pantene commercial career or anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I was some model leading up to this so it wasn't a it wasn't a huge sacrifice it was more just my own vanity and women associate beauty with hair for whatever reason which is ridiculous because i know now having been a bald lady that men really don't care they really don't so it was uh you know that was an interesting sort of <laughs> realization Right. Well, and again, I suffered for my art. I shaved it off. But Exactly. I mean, that's what's so funny about the whole journey is like so many actresses go get into acting because they are beautiful because they that's what they feel like they should do because they're they're pretty and that's what actresses are. But I I never did that. I never was that. I I just wanted to tell stories. I just wanted to Actually, the the uglier roles, the, the better, honestly. Like I said, the evil. The witch, yeah. And the, yeah, those are the roles that really interest me. And so it's funny that I went about this, like, you know, I wasn't trying to be known for my beauty, like so many actors out there. Um, it was quite the opposite. But, and yet it, I, I had the, the, the same effect at the end of the day. You know, I, like I said, there's this clickbait that, Reminds me every day that I'm apparently this, you know, gorgeous in real life. Um. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but you are. Ah. I'm sorry. Well, thank you. I'm looking at myself in the mirror right now without any makeup, and I, I'm begged to differ, but um, <laughs> at the same time, let's face it, I, I can make transformations. Um, well, I will add that you would have been great on SNL. At this point, I'm a, I've resigned myself to the fact that I will probably never be a you know regular cast member, but I'm still open and accepting when they want to call and have me host or you know whatever. I'm I'm here. And you're staying proactive, creating these one woman shows. They're selling out, the critical acclaim. I mean, all you need now is just to fill that mantle up with statues, not just the Funko Pop, but I see some statues in your future. I really do. Oh. Thank you. Gosh, it's just been incredible talking to you. I knew it would be. April said nothing but great things about you. And so I wasn't I wasn't too like, all right, this is a really talented lady and I better not step on my words. I don't think I did. No, you it's amazing. We're fantastic. <laughs>
I mean, you also just like spent what forty five minutes showering me with praise. Like, so as far as I'm concerned, you're amazing. Well, thank you, and it's from the heart. I mean, I've buttered people up just to make them be a little more open, but. Uh, I knew that wasn't going to be the case with you, Naomi. I was going to say, um, I am an open book. I yeah. Now, as far as upcoming performances, can we shout anything out for you? I mean, I put it all in the description of the episodes. I, I do both the podcast, mm-hmm. and then I also have my YouTube channel, and I do a slideshow version of the podcast, so people mm-hmm. have something to look at while they're listening, and that does pretty well too. So, yeah. But uh, w- what's coming up? that we want to tell people about. I, you know, Hollywood's very secretive. Um, I, I do have something, I will be shooting in April, which I'm very excited about, which I cannot talk about. Um, but I can tell you, it will be seen. It's not going to be one of those no budget, low budget movies that just either never get seen or you hope no one sees because it'll ruin your career. So it's, it's not going to be one of those. Um, it'll definitely get seen. So that's exciting. Wow. Uh, but Unfortunately, like I said, that's that's about as much as I can say about it. Wait, the strike's over. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> oh, no, it's still Hollywood. We're still everything's still very, very, very under wraps. You know, I want to tell you what's in the box. You know, you got to pay a ticket. That's right. Anyway, um, the one BR film, which uh, was uh, number one on Netflix a couple of years ago, is uh, going to be doing a sequel. I'm in that. I think I'm allowed to say that. I'm not sure. Listen, it's a sequel. Like, I suppose there's... N- y- y- Listen, until the, the the deal memo's dry, I guess anything could happen. Maybe I'm not in it, but um, I feel like that's safe to assume. Uh, well, of course, like, the only thing I can truly control, as, which is, of course, been one of the themes of this interview, is uh, are the things I produce myself, which... Um, my new show, American Horror Story, is uh, will be in Boston next month. F- folks are in anywhere near Arlington, Mass. I'll be there uh, March 7th and 9th. Um, would love to, to meet everybody at the Regent Theater. And, of course, there'll be more performances after that, hopefully in the Bay Area. Ah, you got me. You remembered. Of course. <laughs> I was going to say, what about us? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd travel to L.A. to see your show. I know that. You know, when you you can also, though, in addition to going to that site and like putting it out there, oh, if there's theaters that you frequent, uh, you can always just tag them in the same way I mentioned earlier that, you know, somebody at FX is employed to uh, see what's popular, see what the fans are resonating with. It's the same thing. If, if, uh, if there's a show and, um, you know, if you want to go to your local whatever theater and say hey mark taper forum like bring me Andy grossman I, I you know we're anxious to see american horror story and then and tag me that's how this works like i then see there's interest they see there's interest and you know then we talk amongst yourselves so naomi i understand you're headed to one of my favorite east coast cities where you're performing at two different events over the course of three days can you tell us a bit more about that this Boston business, this came about because I'm going to be in Boston for a Comic-Con. In fact, if folks are coming to see me in, in the evenings, they should also come see me in the day at the Northeast Comic-Con. So, um, but I figured, gosh, I'll be all the way there. The fans will be already there. That's half the battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Getting us all in the same place. Might as well put on a show. So It makes perfect sense to me. And I'll be sure to shout all that out on my social media. So with that, you know... It's just been an incredible experience talking to you. I'm such a major fan. You know, I was before, but once I really got to see where you have been proactive in your career and just thought, dear God, and she writes it too. Ah, that's very nice. Um, Like I said, I appreciate people who've done their homework and and who do see past the pepper. And that's part of what is brings me this joy about my solo shows is that You know, let's face it, Pepper is like basically non-verbal, you know, monosyllabic grunter. And in the shows, I'm anything but. I I mean, I'm like incredibly verbal. So people are getting to see a whole nother side of me. I mean, I feel like comedy is really my superpower. Like people literally don't know that about me. And and yet it's ironically one of the most obvious characteristics (laughs) when you meet me. So um, the fact that I have all these people that know me that don't really know me, it's like this is uh, this, this oh, give me a chance to actually let people really know me. Yeah. And so, again, I appreciate you, even though you haven't gotten to see the show yet, you, you definitely did your research and you've definitely, you know, 
you know me as, as well as you can be at this point. Well, and I was just thinking maybe, hopefully, what you just explained to me will keep you away from that stereotype bug because you are so different from what everybody knows you as. Well, and I mean, listen, as with any character, you kind of have to think about like, okay, how are we similar? How are we different? And like, you know, obviously I'm physically extremely different, intellectually extremely different. But, you know, at the end of the day, I am I am Pepper, you know what I mean? I, there's, there's kernels in there that are Naomi. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. As are you, dear one. Well, again, uh, I know my followers are going to devour this and um, just have a great future. And that's all we'll think about from now on, because I know you better now. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff in the past. We're just going to go forward. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You've been listening to Naomi Grossman, one of the most talented people I've ever seen in my life. How's that for buttering it up, huh? What do you want from me? What What, what can I do for you, sir? <laughs> me speak em truth. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, dear one. Goodbye. Thanks so much. There you have it. Another retro TV radio podcast in the books. If you viewed the Pod with Picks version of this on YouTube, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you've listened to the audio-only podcast, a positive rating and review would be much appreciated. Check out AmericanHorrorStory.com and be sure to follow Naomi on all her social media communities. You'll find all the links in this episode's description. If you happen to be in Boston on the weekend of March 7th through the 9th, you'll have three opportunities to see her in person and in action, both with her beloved fans at the Northeast Comic Con and on stage in her one-woman show. I hope you will. I'm sure it will be a blast. I also want to thank again our mutual friend April Eunuch from Pacific Coast Aesthetics for hooking the two of us up for this wonderful interview. You can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Golden Rage of TV and on X at Golden Rage of TV One. Once again, this is your host, Pat McCormick, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Radio. Retro TV Radio.